I don't think you can ever have enough light in your shop. So uh, this weekend I designed and built this portable light. Uh, I see a lot of the auto body guys have uh, getting got a lot of good use out of these vertical lights, especially in the auto body uh, area of uh, restorations. And so I thought I needed one, and actually wasn't sure if I, what height I wanted. So I made this thing where it'll pivot, and uh, you can put it different different positions. And um, so I've got I've got a design I'm going to share with you, as well as uh, how I wired this up electrically, and um, got a switch and extension cord built are all built into it. So if you'd like to learn more about that, why don't you follow along? Okay, to get this project started, I bought two eight foot two by threes. I think two by three is going to be plenty stout enough for this project. It's going to make it a little bit smaller, maybe a little lighter, and tuck it away a little better. But I'm going to start off. I'm going to take uh, one of these and cut it for the main post and the light support. That'll be one board. The other board I'll get for the le smaller legs out of and have some a little bit of wood left over. Let me get all that cut up and uh, I'll show you. Okay, I got my leg extensions cut. Uh, you'll see that two of them are shorter than the other. These are uh, 10 and 3 quarter inches in length and these are 11 and 1 quarter in length and I'll show you why that happens. Just the way I'm going to attach them. I want them to be all even. Um, I found this old box of casters in my hoard of collection. It's got a 3 8 inch shank, so I'm going to use a 3 inch head drill. I'll go ahead and pre-drill these legs for um, these casters. Go ahead and get that done So before I attach these to the uh, upright post. So let me get those drilled and um, see how things go. Okay, so this is the top of the main post, and this is the uh, the light support bracket. Uh, I'm going to mount these. These are going to be mounted together. I'm going to drill a hole in the center here, and I put this as a 5 16 inch bolt. It's three and a half inches long. Got a nut and a couple washers, and that um, this will be what holds. And this will be a, a pivot. This will swivel and allow me to to take the light and turn it upside down, and either have it in a high position or a low position. So let's get these drills, these holes drilled. And we'll be in business. Okay, so this is the uh, the light support bracket. I want to countersink the bolt in here so it, it doesn't protrude up here because the light's actually come out on this side of the of this hole. So I'm going to countersink uh, the head of my bolt. I'll drill a countersink hole for that. Okay, so one of the, probably the most challenging pieces is getting the four legs onto this master post. This is the main post. This will rise right from the from the ground upward, and um, the four posts will come around here. We'll we'll see that in a second. So I'm getting the first one started. Um, one of the key things is I want to I want to make sure this is these two edges are flush. These are flush, or if worst case, this post is a little bit. Uh, uh, inset from the base. I don't want this to be a center part because it'll toggle on it. Uh, and then I want to make sure this is 90 degrees. What I've done is I've got this this board sitting on this first leg and I got another leg I'm not using over on the other side just raising up so I got this. This is parallel to the table. Um, and then I've got this clamp on here just holding it down. I've got this situated. I do have these pieces flush and if I can also if I used a little speed square here to make sure that I like the fact that it's it's as square as I can get it. Um, we'll be squaring the next piece as well, so uh, we'll finish that. So now I got that where that is. I am ready now to to screw it in. One here. One here. Okay. So that's that. Now let me. I'm gonna flip this over and get the next leg set up and see if we can get it all squared up. Okay. For leg number two, I'm gonna add it on top. And uh, again, I made sure it's flush on the bottom, flush on this side, and use the square to make sure that it's 
it's uh, square there as well as one last little check is I can now check make sure these two are all in the same plane and it appears I don't see much gap so I like the exactly where it is the other screws that we put in were here and here so I'm gonna take the, on for this board I'm gonna put the screws in diagonally but just the opposite a little bit the opposite sides and actually I'm gonna start pre-drilling these holes Okay, I got leg number three uh, mounted and squared up, everything flush where I want it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill, I'm gonna drill two, two holes that uh, in this first board and then let the screw eat into this, the end grain of this piece, uh, as well as I'll catch into this as well. I'll put two into this and then one into that and then flip around. And actually then I'll also get some coming in from the back side of, of board number one into that as well. So that'll get start getting really tight. So let me get that pre-drilled and screwed together. Okay, so for the final leg, here's leg number four, and uh, I was able to create a flat enough space on my workbench to get it down. Everything seems real level. Get that down, got it clamped on. I'm gonna drill two holes here as well as one into the into the piece here, and I'll actually get one or two in from the side. So once I get this thing mounted up, then I'll spin around and start adding screws to it till it's it's good and tight two or three screws in it's going to really make this thing solid. the base. The key is don't forget when you're doing this don't forget to put your uh, the holes for the casters that you drilled on the outside and on the bottom. Make sure that needs to be the consistent for all four because uh, actually yeah the casters I'll, I'll put them on probably last get it raised up. So let's work on the light and the light support. All right, so here's the light I bought. It's a Hampton Bay two-foot LED light. I'm thinking this was about $70. That's so what I spent on this light. It's got this nice plastic dome that will go on it, ultimately. But what's interestingly is, I, at first I thought there was something missing, then I realized that these, here's the LED strips. There's the actual LED light, individual lights. And they've got these things wired in series um, to this little ballast. This, ha this light does have, um, where would it was over here, dimmable. So if I wanted to put a dimmer switch on it, I could. There are specific dimmer switches for LED systems, so don't just put an old, old style dimmer on it. If I want to put a dimmer on it, I gotta get a specific one for LEDs, but I don't think I want that. I think I want every bit of this, uh, I want it as bright as I can get it. So we'll, we'll go with that first, just a simple switch. Um, but what my intention is, I'm gonna mount that two foot board that I've got cut, I'm gonna mount it right to this strip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill, screw it from this side into the wood. That'll be a good connection. And then we'll, um, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's talk about mounting this light. This, this little two foot bar right here um, is what the mount lights we mounted on. And it's gonna pivot on that, the, that main post. And it's not gonna pivot in the center of this bar. It's gonna pivot on the end. That way when it's, on one, one side, the light will be in a high position, and when I flip it down the other way, it'll be in a low position. So I got a light now that's adjustable up and down. Uh, and I can also actually run the light uh, horizontally if I wanted to. Ultimately, this, this washer is going to go down in this countersunk hole. This bolt's going to go down through there. Unfortunately, I'm using a bolt that I found uh, here around the house. And uh, if I went to buy this bolt, I would buy one that's threaded all the way up. That would really help me because I wanna be able to put this bolt through there and put a back nut on there to tighten it to get, make this thing solid so that when I ultimately mount this to that riser post, I can then tighten that down. I need a compression fit there so that this thing um, has a lot of friction to it. Because this has this sleeve on here, I'm gonna cheat. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put this down through here, but I'm going to actually, I'm going to Gorilla Glue it in there. The Gorilla, don't beat me up for being che uh, cheesy, uh, actually praise me for being uh, maybe uh, creative. The glue is just going to be there just as a filler, just to fill the void and kind of create some friction so that when I put some torsion or, uh, torque on the, the bolt on the other side when I'm finally finished, uh, it won't just freely spin. So I'm just going to create, you know, put the glue in there solely just to create that. I'll have to put this bolt and that washer in there before I mount the light. Now let's talk about the light. Because this is pivoting on this end of the board, I want my electricity of my light to exit from this end of the light. So I'm going to orientate this. This is, here's the, um, here's the ballast and uh, everything's kind of heading this way so I'm going to make sure that I mount this board this way. Uh, this piece is recessed so that's going to be perfect. That's going to mount right on top of that board like that. I'll drill in a couple holes here and a couple on the other end and that'll physically mount this light to the board. I'm then going to take, I've got a whole bunch of old power cables from different things. This actually came from some kind of a light. There's a little grommet to go in. I'm going to feed this light through this little opening here um, and then I'll be able to clamp it down there and clamp it down here and then I'll wire it in. We'll get that done in a minute. So let me let me get the um, the bolt in with a little bit of glue for friction and get this light. Uh, I'm going to drill a couple holes and, and mount this and um, and then we'll work on the electricity piece. Okay, for wiring, I cut off about a two-foot piece of that power cord, and I've got it threaded um, coming out the back side. Threaded through this little grommet hole, and then uh, to here. The green will be ground. I'm going to actually take this, their ground extender off and hook this directly to that. And then I'll use uh, on the, the ribbed side, I'll hook that as to my white common. And then uh, the other side, I'll hook as my hot. And then this this new wire here that I'm extending outside of the fixture, that's actually going to go to a light switch that's going to be mounted on the, the main post. So let me get this hooked up and then I'll show you how that looks when I get it done. Alright, got it finished. Got the green ground going directly to the post and got these wire tied in. These wire nuts were supplied with the light, so that was pretty nice. So now ready to, you know, the, the lens can go on here, we can put that on last. So now I think I'm going to take this and mount it uh, to our post. this sit for a while let that glue try and dry give me some better friction I'm gonna tighten this down I want this I want to be there's some friction here because ultimately this thing will be down here it's only two feet off the ground and or I can swing this thing up and I want it to be able to stay in this up position and now it's about six feet at the very highest so it'll have uh, two different positions I may actually put a, a lock up here just to help hold it but um, let me I'm gonna let that all dry and kind of get it all tightened down. I think I can create enough friction that it'll stay, but we'll see. Next, we're gonna work on the uh, light switch box. We're gonna mount that on the back of the main post, and we'll be able to hook this uh, directly to that. So let's do some electrical work there. Okay, so the switch I'm gonna use is a switch and an outlet combo. And I want to wire this so that this an outlet is hot as long as this whole unit is turned uh, plugged in, and then this switch right here is going to actually turn on and off the light. So I got to had to kind of do some continuity tests and figure out how 
this uh, needs to be wired and I came up with this diagram and uh, I'll make this available where you can download this for free and print it out but the key is you got uh, a power cord well I just went to the store and bought a long 25 foot power cord I'm gonna integrate that in here um, basically got the the white wire will come up gets pigtailed uh, it'll feed this lower bowl, uh, nut as well as go over and feed the common to the light um, the, the power from the source will come up and feed into this side there's a built-in brass um, connector it connects these two terminals together we're going to leave that connected uh, so we'll retain that brass tab and that'll take the hot and also feed it up to this switch if the switch in the on position that'll continue the continuity uh, in that positive circuit to uh, out to the light and we'll turn the light on and then we have grounding we need to we'll have ground coming from the switch or from this uh, power socket and um, be able to ground this outlet as well as up and ground the light so I'm gonna wire this based on this drawing if it works out good if not I'll change the drawing but uh, and again this will be available for download there'll be a link in the bottom okay so I got it all finished wired wired exactly like the diagram I've got a fan plugged into this switch the light is turned off so I definitely got positive here whether this is off or on and then by flipping the switch you see this light this light comes on and the and the fan doesn't go off so this is exactly what I was looking for switch light constant power here so when you're out you've got an come with basic extension cord got another place to plug something in be perfect for working on my car okay I've got my casters put into position they're a very good compression fit so if you lift the whole unit they won't fall out. They're they're in there pretty tight, and the thing rolls around really easily. It's just it's it's so light. Realistically, if you didn't want to put casters or go through that expense, to leave the casters off, just the thing just lifts right up. I'm I'm not sure how much it weighs, but it's super light. You can just push it around in the room wherever you wanted to, and that that would be that would be just as fine as well. The fact that I had them, I just used them. Not pretty nice. Next thing I did was uh, I made this little cord wrap. And what this does, this is a, it's 14 inches long. It's a piece of, of leftover 2x3. Uh, just kind of gave it a little fancy cut there so I could wrap my extension cord around that. I decided I wanted, I, I wanted to have a, I wanted this thing to be self-sustaining. I wanted to be able to plug this into a wall to provide out, uh, power to this light without having to draw some other extension cords. So I went and bought at uh, Big Lots, this is a $10 uh, 25 foot power cord. And what I did is I ended up uh, lopping off the, the female end of it. Uh, didn't need that, so I cl clapped that off. And then I actually um, ended up cutting off about three feet of the next piece of the end of it and used that. And I actually rewired um, this piece here. Instead of that black power cord that I showed you earlier, I actually I really like the, uh, the gauge of this wire. So I ended up uh, replacing that black extension cord and I actually put in you know just continued with this same thing and put that in loop so that's that this wire here runs from the actual light inside uh, to the switch itself so that got replaced and then back to this uh, this power cord wrap here it basically after I got it uh, after I got cut out I then mounted it uh, actually from this side you see I got it screwed in so that's how I did that and then um, because of this thing this this being tight I don't want you can't take this and wrap it this way because it gets tight and it um, it only it only wants to swing one way um, in this in, as far as the video it just wants to swing to the left if I swing to the left I can go all the way to the top with it so I'm gonna build a little stop uh, with some more of the of the 2 by 3 that's left over and I'm gonna mount it on this surface here we'll do that next uh, and that'll basically force me to always spin it one direction. That way this this core doesn't get uh, pulled tight. Um, the light socket itself, you know, we just, we just just have installed that. You know, if you didn't want to go fancy with the extra socket, I mean, just a simple switch, light switch right there is super simple to, to wire. Uh, that, that's You can find wiring diagrams on that as well. So that, that doesn't have to be as complicated as that. I just like the addition to having, um, since I've got a powered item pushed around in the room somewhere, I've got the extra socket there to, to run something on, drill or whatever I wanted to. 
And then the last little piece that I'm going to modify or I'm going to update to it is in this very top, I'm going to drill a hole right here and I'm going to drill it through this post and I'm going to drill it into the light support bracket and that way I can push a, a, uh, just an extra bolt through there. I'm just going to push it in there as a stop and then I'll rotate the light in its up position and use that same hole and drill another hole into this light support bracket that's on the other side. That way when it is in the up position I can just push that bolt in there as a safety pin. That way the thing won't flop over left or right. The other little piece I did, I thought it would be wise to go ahead and um, after I got this, this nut jammed down pretty tight, I put an extra jam nut on here and, um, and got these... Ooh, We'll go there. I forgot to tighten it up. So I'm going to tighten these two against each other. That way this thing won't come loose and I'll still maintain that friction, a real nice friction fit. So let me get, uh, I guess the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stop down here. I'll get that cut out, probably about a four inch piece. Um, you'll see how, I'll show you how I mount that. And then we'll get that hole drilled up there so that we have a little safety piece so it'll stay in the up position. Let's get those done. Okay, so here's this four inch uh, block, this piece of the leftover two by three. I'm going to mount it to the side of the main post so that as this light swings this direction, it'll have a place to stop. Um, so I'm going to get that drilled in and then uh, screwed in. Okay, now as this light swings this direction, it'll come down here so far and it'll have a, a permanent stop. So I know not to swing it the other direction, that's the key, is when I want to start I'll make sure it goes the other direction. So now I'm going to work on putting um, the pinhole at the top. Okay, so for this locking pin, I, want, um, I found this small bolt, it's a three inch long bolt and it's going to go through the post and actually protrude into this uh, light support bracket. And um, while I'm really interested in it, I guess, when it's in the up position, I also want to accommodate for when I'm in this horizontal position. And that's the one's going to be more difficult to accommodate. I originally was going to put the hole up here just to, uh, for the upper and the lower piece, but that would have missed, missed the opportunity to also be able to lock it, which is in the side position. So by putting, go ahead and making this a 90 degree angle, I'm going to put my hole right here, and that's going to go through the post and into. This top bracket, I'm going to go about halfway. I've, I've made a mark on the on the top halfway, and I went ahead and uh, found a drill bit that's the right size. It'll give me a, a very loose fit. This will I've drilled this into a, a sample piece of wood, and this slides right into it very easily. And I've set a depth gauge so I know how deep to go. I'm going to go ahead and drill this all the way through and into there. Then I'm going to raise this to the upper position, use this same hole, and drill again and make another hole into this for that position and I'm going to lower it to the bottom and I'm going to drill back into this support bracket and make that position just so all three positions I can just cram this little uh, bracket, this little uh, locking bolt in and uh, that way it's got a place to store and I don't have to, I won't lose it. So let's get this first one drilled. this will just push in and now that locks this from well it's going to fall down a little bit just because it's a little bit loose but at least it's not going to slide around to the ground and possibly the whole thing tip over and break right so that's that I can pull that out now I want to put this in this let's get this up and down where we want it about right there and then I'm going to draw this same hole use this same hole right here and go in spot for the bolt to go in when it's in that position again so it won't accidentally fall if this, this becomes loose and let's just do one more in the bottom even though it's not really needed at all I want to put it in there just in case because I'll probably mostly use it in this bottom position I've got it locked against that uh, that post um, I just want a place to store the bolt Alright, 
between that and I think I'll wrap some string, uh, rope or some uh, wire on here and tie it into this bolt just so again I don't lose it. Um, but I think that's a for a bolt you find in the in the in the drawer. It's a pretty good use for it. Now we got that locking piece. Maybe something you can do again. There's a lot of things you can. You know, you don't even have to use the LED. You can use fluorescent. Maybe you, maybe your projects don't want this color light. Uh, with the fluorescent bulbs, you can get the the white and the blue and the yellow, all the different color lights. Maybe a different color. So maybe a, a fluorescent fixture uh, is more your style. So you got choices on fixture. Those are so, a little cheaper, not much. Um, you could actually avoid this switch altogether. You could just come out of your light and go straight to a power cord if you didn't want to get involved with the light switch. So there's a lot of, lot of variations to this little project that you go. This is kind of what uh, all the pieces that I wanted. So the very last thing I wanted to do is I raised this to top position. I put an arrow right here. It reminds me of which direction to rotate this. Now if I rotate the other way, it puts my uh, cable in a bind. I don't want to do that. So this little arrow will remind me that when you want to put it in the lower position to rotate it in this direction. In. and we're done so I'll do some simple sketches of this of this project and I'll include that in a PDF that I'll put in the comment section of this of this video that way you can download and print that that'll be for free just just click on the link and it'll take you to a page where it'll pull down uh, the PDF should print to any standard printer uh, you could use that as just field notes for your project. Uh, you can make any modifications you want to, obviously, to it as you want. As well as uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you make comments, you decide to make one, say, hey, I made one of these kind of cool. If you, if you come up with some good alterations and changes to it, share that as well. Because anyone that views this video would probably like to hear your alterations and things that you decide to make. I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hey, I appreciate you watching. Thanks.